Good morning, good morning. What a beautiful day it is to be worshiping our Lord, our Savior Jesus Christ. And with the psalmist David, I want to say let's all praise the God of all gods, the King of all kings, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad and be happy with it. For God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, wanted each one of us to enjoy and be a blessing not only to our family members, but to everyone, including our co-workers, our friends, even our neighbors. This blessing that God has given us is the same blessing that He empowered to all of those who believe in Him through the power of the Holy Spirit that will cause us to live according to the will of the Father. When we trust Him, when we follow Him, when we obey Him, we are sure that the power is under control because the Holy Spirit that is in us is the one making us do the things that God wants us to to do for his name's sake. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, today on our emphasis on, me, uh, on the way to happiness, I want to focus on the idea that when the Holy Spirit is in us, power is under control through meekness. Power under control in meekness. May I invite you to open your Bibles to the book of Colossians. Chapter 3, verses 12 to 17, and then on to Psalm chapter 37. But I will do first Colossians 3, 12 to 17. In your Bible, listen to the word of the Lord. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, cloth yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. And then in verse 15, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. Verse 17. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving back, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. And then in Psalm chapter 37, verses 9 to 11. But those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while, and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy great peace. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful time that you have given us once again to openly declare the word of the Lord to all the people in this world. Father, I pray that you will bless our brothers and sisters, our friends who are listening right now, who are, who are worshiping with us, for we know that you are in our midst, even though we may be far from each other. You're always there for us. We ask for your power through the Holy Spirit to help us understand that indeed power is under control when we as your children live with meekness in our hearts. Thank you so much for your word. I pray, Father, through your Holy Spirit, that you will help us to understand, to know you more, to know your plans, to know your perspective, and to know your will for our lives. 
Bless us now as we worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, my friends, welcome once again. In your slides you will see in there, happiness and blessedness are actually used interchangeably when we talk about someone's status in life. Happiness and blessedness is very true in the Christian life. I show some pictures in there also, if you will see that. Once, one time we were given a chance to live in Germany. Germany is on a higher elevation compared to many areas in Europe. And you can see a lot of places in there that actually focuses on water, on the rivers, and also the lakes. Now, once one, one time we traveled from Germany going to Austria, and we passed through this Swiss, little Swiss. And a lot of places like this. And I, remember, I was reminded of a story about a quiet forest dweller who lived above this Austrian village along the Alps. Now, this old gentleman had been hired many years ago by a young town, the council, to clear away the debris from the pools of water up in the mountain, down to the cities, or down to the village, down to the crevices that fed the lovely spring flowing their town. Now, I remember they tried to divert some water from the rivers to their own lake or their own pond, and then you will see like a lot of different creatures in there, like trout, and then um, they raise those fish, and then in the restaurant they will say, you can, you can catch what you want, and then we will cook for you. It's that kind of thing that actually you can feel that you are in the Alps. Now, one time, this faithful, silent, regular person patrolled the hills. And while he patrolled the hills, he removed the leaves, the branches, wiped away the silt that would otherwise choke and contaminate the fresh flow of water. Now, by and by, the village became popular, like this little Swiss that I talked to you about, becomes the attraction of many vacationers. Many tourists will stop by, especially those who, are, who wanted to try their delicacy. Now, swans, swans floated along the crystal clear spring water. Mill wheels of various businesses located along the water. Farmlands were naturally irrigated. And the view from restaurants was picturesque, very good, very clear, beyond description. You can look from the hills, overview of these places. Now, years passed. One evening, the town council met for its annual meeting. Now, they reviewed the budget of the village. One of the council members actually caught the, uh, uh, his eye caught the salary of this old, natural, gentle, regular person who patrols the area. He said he's being paid to keep the spring. Now, who is this old man? Why do we keep him on, on year after year? No one ever sees him. No one is following up on him. For all we know, the strange ranger of the hills is doing us no good. He is not necessary any longer. And by unanimous vote, this they dispense and kicked the old man from services. Now, for several weeks, nothing changed. By early fall, the trees began to shed their leaves. 
Small branches snapped off and fell into the pools, hindering the rushing flow of sparkling water. And one afternoon, someone noticed a slightly yellowish brown tint in the spring. A couple of days later, the water becomes much darker, dirtier. Slimy film covered sections of the water on the banks. And not only that, because of the flow that was stopped, the wheels are no longer working. They, sm- they, 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 they could not move. And some finally ground to halt. Swans left, as did the tourists, because they like to see that. Clammy fingers of disease and sickness reach deeply into the village. And quickly, the embarrassed council called a a special meeting. Now, realizing this gross error in judgment, they hired back the old keeper of the spring. And within a few weeks, the river again have have lived a life that was like before. The wheels started to turn, and new life returned to the village in the Alps once again. Now, I like to share this story because I know there's a truth in this in our lives. The story is more than an idle tale. It carries with it a clear, relevant analogy directly related to the times in which we live. What the keeper of the spring means to the small village, our Christians means to the world. Christianity may seem needless. Christianity may, may, may seem unimportant. And a small of the vast world. But God help any society that attempts to exist without Yours and mine's influence without the Christian influence. Now, brothers and sisters in the Lord, in the passages that we have just read, Jesus called his followers to be a frontline organization. We are not supposed to set back. Nowhere do we get the impression that Jesus wanted us to live in isolation, separated from the world. It is impossible to live truly for the kingdom of God in private. We are called as the expression of God's principles. We are called to be ambassadors of Christ. Now, as ambassadors of Christ, Jesus called us to be meek. The meekness that he described requires us to be strong people who are grounded in the word of God. But in the midst of all these things that we are in right now, it demands us to have a personal relationship with God. And when we have that kind of personal relationship with him, we are in the foremost frontline organization that leads the people from the front, not from the back. Our misunderstanding of meekness creates this difficulty. In a world that thinks only aggressive, type A persons, hardworking persons can get ahead of life, is actually choking that individual's lives. Because it is hard to believe that those who are meek will inherit anything, much less the earth. That's in the mind of many people. But in the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ, when he was teaching the disciples, he said, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Meekness is the way to happiness for several reasons. But the most important is that it also gives us the blessing of faithfulness, of peacefulness, of calm in the hands of God. I have three short lessons that I want to share with you in my own understanding of the meekness that God desires from each one of us as God's chosen people. Listen to this. Make notes of this one. Brothers and sisters of the Lord, number one, 
meekness helps us to explore the possibility of loving others more. Look into verses 13 and 14. And this verses tells us that the goal of Christian life is love. The measure of maturity is our love for God and our love for others. If we fail in our love to God and to others, we have missed what it is means to be a Christian in this world. But there is hope for the one who has failed in love and many of them around us. And I hope you are not one of them. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your mind, with all your soul, and love others as Christ loved you. Can we love others as Christ loved? No, we can't. It's hard to sacrifice one's agenda just because of others. And that's the reason why people are still failing in their Christian lives. We cannot love others like Christ. Especially, we cannot love others without Christ in us. The Lord who forgave even those who crucified him stands ready to forgive each one of us, to forgive you and to forgive your lack of love to him and to others. Meekness tells us about this quality of love for us to live a happy life. Blessed are they who are meek. Actually, good translation for meekness is kindness or gentleness. And that's what Apostle Paul is telling the Christians in Colossae. Cloth yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. The concept of a man being a gentleman was born in the Christian faith. Because Christians, both men and women in this world, who, came, who claim as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, are gentle, are courteous, are considerate. Gentleness and meekness are characteristics of a Christian individual. The Apostle Paul encourages us in Titus chapter 3 verse 2. To slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate, and to show true humility towards all men. As long as you maximize other faults while minimizing your own, you can never be happy. Happiness will be away from you. That's why Jesus said to those who are meek, they shall inherit the earth. In Psalms chapter 22 verse 6, the meek shall eat and be satisfied. In Psalm 20, 25 verse 9, the meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. This is the promise of the Lord. It is very significant for us as Christians, because meekness is actually an expression that we love God and that we love others. Number two. Meekness causes us to accept that we can do nothing by ourselves. Look into verses 15 and 16. No one in nothing in this world can live on their own without the love of God. People might pretend that everything in their life is okay, but I'm telling you, brothers and sisters in the Lord, my friends, there is that space in the hearts of people. That only the power of God can fill in. Without the power of God, without the presence of the Holy Spirit, none of them can live a happy life. Throughout history, we can always say with the beatitude that we can translate in our own words. 
Blessed are they who entirely are self-controlled is another way to do it. Weakness is giving in to the worst that is in you. Meekness is mastery over weaknesses. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, consummate as the role model that we can look to when aspiring toward living lives with the virtue in the Lord Jesus Christ as a meek person. He's not only teaching us to be compassionate, to be gentle, to be humble, to be meek, but he himself, his life, demonstrated all those qualities of a person that he wants us to be. And this is what I really appreciate in the life of our Savior, Jesus Christ. He does not only teach. He does not only taught the disciples on how to live happy lives. He himself showed it to them. He himself demonstrated meekness through his willingness to take up our heavy burdens and bear them for us, which he had prophesied long time ago through the prophet Isaiah. In spite of his omniscient foresight of these events, he exhibited tremendous meekness by enduring this pain with no thought of self and without any complaint, doing it according to the will of the Father. The ultimate expression of Jesus' meekness that he wants us to be a follower of, of, that he wants us to be in the footsteps of him, was when he depicted the ability that when he did not call on 12,000s, thousands of angels, and he can do that in just a snap of his finger to save him from people who are actually beating him, spitting on him, and crucified him on the cross. He refrained from doing that. That to atone and redeem us from our sins. He did that for you and me. The meekness of the Lord Jesus Christ from the time on that he lived in this world until the time he left from Mount Calvary and on that tomb. The Lord Jesus Christ's life is a great example. To be meek does not mean that you are cowardly because that's what people thought of the Lord Jesus Christ. He did not fight back. He did not even like lift a finger he did not call on the angels of the Lord to strike those people who caused him suffering. In Psalm chapter 45, verse 4. And in thy majesty ride on prosperously, because the truth of meekness and righteousness, and thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Such self-control results in peace with oneself. And the Lord Jesus Christ did it for God's glory. Those who cannot control their anger, those who cannot control the greed, those who cannot control their tongue or ambitions in life will never be at peace. First with God and then to themselves. They will constantly be at war. Be at war even to their loved ones. Because they missed the message of following the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. Third and last, brothers and sisters in the Lord, meekness encourages us to commit everything in God's hands. In verse 17, listen to this. And whatever you do, whatever in, your, whatever in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father through him. 
Without God in our lives, we can do nothing. Without Him, we are useless. Without Him saving us from our sins, brothers and sisters in the Lord, we are as dirty as rags. Commit everything that is in you to God. Meekness is an attitude of humility towards God and gentleness, compassionate towards men, springing from a recognition that God is in control. Although weakness and meekness may sound similar or look similar, they are not the same. For weakness is due to negative circumstances, such as lack of strength or lack of courage. But brothers and sisters in the Lord, meekness is due to a person's conscious choice of giving himself to God and let the Spirit of God move him. It is the strength and courage under control, coupled with kindness. A great explanation or great example for this one is Moses. In my quiet times, reading through the Bible, I remember that in chapter 7 of the book of Exodus, actually, you can see here a man who lived a life of meekness. Moses never complained to God when he was actually told by God to talk to Pharaoh. To remind him that he is powerful than anybody in this world. Powerful than Pharaoh. But then God actually chose Moses to be God's servants to remind Pharaoh that nothing in this world belongs to him. And through the plagues, every one of them, God used Moses to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Every time, every one of these plagues, Moses, when he heard from God, just followed him, his instructions on how to deal with people, not only with Pharaoh and the Egyptians, but also to the Israelites, who God loves. Also in Exodus chapter 18, Actually, Moses' meekness was shown as an evident of God's blessings when he literally wear himself out. And look at this one. Moses, being able to talk to God, listened to his father-in-law, Jethro. When Jethro told him that you are wearing yourself out in taking all of this Get leaders to hundreds, fifties, and tens, and let them handle those situations. And let the big ones be on your hand. Because of his meekness. Because of his compassion. Because of his teachable spirit. He listened to his father-in-law and did what he advised him in handling issues of tens, fifties, and hundreds and thousands, and for him to take bigger responsibilities in the relationship of God to his people as their maker and master. Brothers and sisters in the Lord Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, he said, but, this, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such things there is no law. And this is what actually can make us powerful. When we say power is under control in meekness, that means everything in our lives, if we will call upon the name of the Lord, if we humble ourselves in God the Father, things can happen. And sometimes we are not even aware of it. Because sometimes we are not sure of what we ask for. Jesus, as being Lord, 
gives us the assurance. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and I will show thee great and mighty things. Yes, I agree with you all. Meekness is so hard to develop. And you are right. You could not be meek when you are tried and tested according to the standard and patterns of this world. But brothers and sisters in the Lord, don't forget the power of God in you. God never intended us or intended for us to be able to make ourselves meek. You cannot do it your own. It is just not our nature that we cannot do ourselves unless we call upon the name of the Lord. And through His saving grace and through His continuing work in our lives daily and the power of the Holy Spirit in us, the infilling of the Holy Spirit in us, things can happen according to His will. Meekness is not about giving up power but rather diligently harnessing it for the good of others. In other words, one must decide to act meek through the power of God and the Holy Spirit. And then it is an impressive self-controlled virtue that comes through us only from God. So the question that I have for each one of us, Yes, you have tried to be meek, but this self in you is kicking in, not willing to submit. But have you allowed the Holy Spirit to empower you to make this impossible thing about meekness to happen in your life? And brothers and sisters in the Lord, my friends, when you do, the wonderful quality of meekness will be yours and you will enter the way to happiness and let the love of Christ fill you. Remember those three items, three lessons. Always know that God is controlling us and when we have God in our lives through the Holy Spirit, power is under control through meekness. It is hard for you to be meek unless you humble yourself down to the Lord Jesus Christ. One first step of being meek is to come into the presence of the Lord asking Him to come into your heart, submitting to Him all your sins, acknowledging that you can do nothing without Christ. But if in Christ is Christ in you, you can do whatever the Holy Spirit leads you to do. Ask Him to come into your heart. Allow Him to be your Lord and Savior so that meekness can be seen in you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence. We thank you for this message today. Help us to let the power of the Holy Spirit be with us so we will become meek, gentle, and compassionate. Because through this power alone, Lord, we can live a happy life. Thank you so much for reminding us once again that in you we can trust. That if we call upon the name of the Lord, whatever the desires of our hearts, as long as we will be faithful, you will grant it to us. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, my friends, May the grace of God, who continue to love you, care for you, and wanted you to have fellowship in Him and with Him. The love of the Lord Jesus Christ, who came into this world, poured out His kindness and the power of the Holy Spirit to control each of us, me upon us, now and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all.